Joining us right now, the one, the only, columnist, New York Times bestselling author, and gal about town, Ann Coulter, although we can't really be about town these days, can we, Ann? It's very sad. Very sad. I think we should be able to be about town, at least with the other ones, with our other fellow quarantine inmates. It was occurring to me that this, the whole thing is, um, you know, two weeks is the magic number. If Trump had shut down the country two weeks earlier instead of the projected 60,000 deaths, we'd only have 6,000. If someone goes to, to, you know, L.A. or Florida from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, two weeks you got to self-quarantine. Um, if you're in contact with somebody with uh, the Wuhan flu, two-week quarantine. If you test positive, two-week quarantine. Okay, so... I and pretty much everyone I know or would want to not social distance with has been in a self-quarantine for three weeks at this point. I'm pretty sure I'm Wuhan flu free. Yeah. So why couldn't I have a dinner party with those people? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I mean, it depends. Am I on the list? Um, you're totally on the list. All right, good. Thank you. You're broadcasting from home, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that kind of, of, of sort of easing up, we should be able to do that now. But there are some governors. I mean, look at the governor of Michigan with her, you know, little uh, Mussolini mustache. Well, actually, Mussolini didn't have a mustache, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't want anyone to go over to anybody's house. I mean, how, how infuriating is that? is that? Is that her auditioning to be on Joe Biden's ticket? It's her auditioning to be our fascist leader. Um, no, uh, crises do always bring out the fascist in certain people. Yeah. Um, as I've said before, this is like like airport security for the entire country. <laughs> um, Cuomo was bragging today, or not bragging, but you know, boasting. It didn't seem like a bad thing. That who would have thought before nine eleven, you'd have to take off your shoes to fly, <laughs> you'd have to have your bags searched from top to toe. Yeah. Um, yeah, those were bad things. Right, right. <laughs> those are bad things. What We couldn't look at just Muslims then, and we're not allowed to protect just the vulnerable now. We all have to be shut out, not only from, as I say, dinner parties with other people who have been um, self-quarantined for three weeks, but um, study after study, which I keep tweeting, keeps coming out saying that um, what reduces the transmission of the Wuhan flu um, or, or and other viruses as well is sunshine and fresh air. <laughs> so what does the government tell us? No golfing, no tennis, no playing in the parks, no going to the beach, um, no running. <laughs> no, that, that's good for you. Study after study keeps showing that. Um, it is just like airport security. We, we will not fixate on, on protecting, in this case, um, well, in that case, targeting the, the likely perps, in this case, protecting the vulnerable, which it seems to me after, after three weeks of self-isolation, and by the end of the month it will be 90% of the com- country will have been self-isolated for one month, um, 90%. Okay, so for the other 10%, the essential workers, and, okay, admittedly, there are a lot of screw-offs who haven't been self-isolating, but I don't really even know how much trouble they can be getting themselves into <laughs> since there's nobody, <laughs> there's nobody to, to infect other than the other screw-offs. Right. Right, and, and and that's just Darwin working his magic right there. I mean, <laughs> Or they will have worked their way through it. I mean, those are probably a lot of young people. Right. Um, and, and they will have, after a month, they will have had it, maybe symptom-free, but, but it's gone now. And that's the other part of this. It's so funny. When it, George Stephanopoulos makes great news by coming out and saying, you know, huge headlines everywhere. George Stephanopoulos has it. My gosh. And he says... I had no idea I had it. I mean, I knew I was exposed to it because my wife had it, but I haven't had any symptoms. I would think that would be a story worth pursuing, Anne, as we're trying to combat this thing. Yes, I mean, admittedly, that's why people are saying testing, testing, testing. We want to be tested to see if maybe a lot of people have it already. And then, of course, they say... Well, we don't know if that gives you immunity. Well, okay, can we find that out? Yeah, maybe maybe that <laughs> I mean, should be a higher up on the list there instead of instructing us how to wear a mask. Right, right. It's not it's not crazy that that would give you immunity. Oh, but your mention of George Stephanopoulos reminds me of an all new idea with with all these people um, haranguing us from their million dollar salaried um, cable and network TV jobs. Um, I'm thinking. 
you know, to everybody's bearing some pain. How about they give up their salaries through the crisis? I mean, other people have been able to get by on just, I don't know, just a million a year, not, not 10, 8, 20 million. Right. Um, lots of people in public housing that they do it all the time, get by on, on a million. Yeah, that uh, that would be that would be nice, and it would also be nice for some of these uh, local governments who are trying to figure out that oh, hey, maybe we have to raise taxes during this thing to uh, make up all the shortfalls, property taxes on this thing, since we're not going to get our income taxes. Yet they're not cutting any employees from government, and they're not. Right. Gonna, I got to think that there's some ways to trim fat from governments right now, state level and county level, not to mention. Well, that. also as they say, to have some skin in the game. Yes. All of the people who are telling us don't go out, stay home. Oh, wh- what is the main vector of transmission? By the way, that came out from a big study yesterday. I tweeted at home indoors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, stay stay indoors, stay indoors. Well, how about you guys? Because all the ones haranguing us, government officials and people on TV, they're still making money and their ratings are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you shut some? I haven't talked to you about the and you mentioned it in this week's article. This bizarre resistance to have any kind of hope about hydroxychloroquine being a a great therapy drug. If there is a therapeutic drug that helps people with these symptoms and saves them from the certain death we were told after looking at Italy and Wuhan until, uh, well, we're not supposed to look at Wuhan anymore. Uh, Why are they so resistant to the idea that hydroxychloroquine might actually show some promise? No, it's really crazy. First, it's crazy on its own terms. Um, this has been approved by the FDA to treat malaria, so it is deemed, quote, safe. We're not worried about it. You know, it's being, it's, it's safe. It's whether it will work. Normally, the FDA won't approve a drug for treatment of something. They don't want people being ripped off or scam artists out there. Um, but that's, that's, we're not worried about this killing people. Um, it's a deathly disease, but I found it, as I mentioned in my column, particularly um, interesting that these are the exact same people um, who I think correctly praise the gay community for pushing the FDA into accepting compassionate use drugs um, back during the AIDS crisis. It right. was, that was a huge civil rights issue with gays, you know, showing up, pro- gay spokesmen protesting en masse, saying to the FDA, we are dying. Yep. Well, let us be the human guinea pigs here. We want to take these drugs. Maybe it won't work, but I'm dying anyway. I would say, remember the Angels in America? It's this huge controversial story storyline that only the rich connected in the closet gay men can get AZT but not the rest of us. You're so right. It was it was a, and it was an appropriate fight to make, but now they're they're like resisting that. Yes, it's exactly the reverse. Also, in contrast to the AIDS era, um, <laughs> the argument was, I mean, at least Randy Schultz and a few doctors would um, with with some trepidation say, you know, maybe we should shut down the bathhouses. That seems to be a major vector for this disease. And no, the reaction from the media was, no, how dare you? Right. This is part of gay culture. But now with the Wuhan flu, can we shut down the whole country? Sure, no problem. Well, but you can't shut down the uh, pangolin feeding ground or bat soup stall at the Wuhan wet market because that's also part of the culture. Come on, get it straight here, Anne. There are still some <laughs> things that you're not allowed to do. That uh, should be our number one objective. That's the one thing we have to get out of this. It's like shutting down Al-Qaeda training camps after 9-11. The entire con- or globe has got to come together and tell China no more wet markets. This is the fifth um, massive pandemic, the, at least fifth by my count. There may be more. They have launched on the world that started in the in the wet markets. This yep. has got to be stopped. SARS, H one N one, avian flu, and Asian the, flu. Oh, the Asian flu. That, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And we got to leave it there. I made a Broadway reference though. Uh, when this is all over and we can really get back to normal, I have a friend who works at the Schubert Organization in New York, and and uh, this person has told me she's one of us. Uh, that she spots you at some of the Broadway openings there. I know you like to go to the big uh, opening night. So <laughs> one of these days, we're going to party I on do. Broadway. I do. I would love to. Right. I didn't know there were any secret secret wingers on that whole strip. Oh, I'll introduce you to all of them. They're, they're, they're more than you would imagine. We'll Anne, have a thanks. small, very, very small dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks for joining us, as always. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.